Hey, welcome back. Uh, we've been building a streaming music service with Phoenix and Elixir. Um, last time we had just started to build out kind of the player page or do, do a little front end work. And we got, um, we got the metadata showing for the um, audio as well as the background. Um, and in this video, I thought we could do a little bit of let's let's start with styling up some of what we built last time like the header and these two sections and um, see how that goes and uh, if we like that then um, maybe we'll get into actually loading some of the media like maybe we'll go do the background or the audio um, and get that actually playing um, so yeah let's do a little bit of styling um, we'll just put this right in here for now. Maybe we'll factor it out into its own file later. Um, but for now, it can live right here while we're working on it. Um, so one of the things... Um, so let's think, how do I want to structure this? Um, Let's write a little bit of it and then see if, um, see if we see a structure that makes sense. So one of the first things I see is that I've got way too much space um, between the, uh, this lo-fi limo header and the paragraph below it. And I think most of that, or heading H1, element there and I think most of that's coming from the h1 element a little bit of it's coming from the paragraph so I want to adjust the margin on both of those um, and in fact we can eliminate the margin on one of them which is going to be the h1 element in this case and then we'll leave a little bit of top margin on the paragraph um, yeah yep so we'll say um, and then header p margin is going to be um, let's try half an m and see what we think That's still, um, it's a little much. Let's drop it right down to zero for me. We'll probably adjust this after we do pick some typefaces and stuff, but for now the line height's actually given me enough separation between those two for my taste. Um, but, but again, once we change typefaces, all bets are off. We'll probably have to revisit it. Um, and I'm fine with that. So for now, I'll just say tighten up header spacing. Okay. And then the other... Um, tighten up. Mission list. Tighten up. It's not quite tighten up. It's. Uh, I'm just saying that because I just said that. It's. Um, I want to like inline definition list. Terms. And terms inline. Yeah, something like that. So, um, I think, oh, is it display inline? Hmm. Mm 
Hmm. That didn't quite get what I was going for. Oh, geez, because I put the wrong selectors. I want the term and the definition to be in line, not the list itself. That's weird. Okay, so that gets us that. Oh, man, this. Hmm. Yeah, this is why a definition list isn't really a good fit for this, isn't it? I'm not going to rack my brains out over this. Um, Yeah, you, you can, and I have bashed these into shape to do what I want, but I don't, let's, let's see what's another way and then see which way we like better, okay? So another way I could do this is we'll have a paragraph here, and then this could be a span, right? I know it's no semantic value, right? Well, let's just see. Uh huh. Like that. And then we need to line break. to format all of them like that and span like that and then we can lose that see I like that better that gives us for free the layout we want I think it remains semantically very similar because it's arguable whether a definition list was really the right semantics for that. I know we have like a, a key value type situation, but that's not always a definition list in my opinion. Um, I have to try not to be so much of a programmer occasionally and just be like, well, but does that really make sense? Or Am I just trying to fit things into like a, a very abstract view of the world? Um, and we'll end up, so one of the things I know is that like these, the key and value, I'm going to style differently. So we'll end up dropping classes onto some of these spans um, to get to get the um, style we want. So, and that's okay. That's why I'm wrapping even these things that we don't touch with our JavaScript at this time in spans because I know I'll want to be able to style them separately later. And we'll, we'll come back and do that, don't worry. Let me get rid of that. Yeah, I feel better about that. Okay. I don't know. Let me know your opinion on those those types of things down in the comments. Do you do you lean hard towards using semantic stuff, or is it just kind of whatever looks good, or do you try and strike a balance between the two? I I've, I've noticed different developers do 
have different strategies on that continuum. I'd be curious to know what yours is. Maybe you convince me to use a different strategy or to adjust my balance a little. Um, place, meta, place, um, mm, header and other sections in corners. So I think what we can do is um, it's going to be position fixed. And then let's put the header in the upper right. I usually like to put top first. Top right and then width 50%. And I believe that's going to refer to the so normally it's the enclosing element, but I, I hope in this case that's going to refer to the viewport. I seem to recall it does, but we may have to check that. Um, and then there's something else with that. Is the width going to count correctly? There's a thing about that, right? Um, it looks like it did get 50%, but, um, man, what's that called? Um, box, box sizing, box, Box sizing, is that what it's called? Yeah. Sorry, if you do CSS all day, you're probably just like, dude, use that on everything. I don't use it on everything. I use it like when I need it. Probably makes me a weirdo in 2021. So I have high confidence that margin, well, first of all, that these types of selectors are fine on a wide variety of browsers. The margin position fixed, we can use almost everywhere. Box sizing feels newer to me though. Let's see. Oh shoot, CSS3. And yet it's supported all the way back to IE8, very early versions of Safari. Okay, cool. Well, that helps me feel better about using it. Oh, we ended up over at W3 schools somehow. Well, I guess that's where we ended up. Mm. So I, I do think that we're gonna wanna put box sizing on these things in particular. So, cause if and when we put something in the upper left corner, I want them to come together at the middle, not overlap, right? So, eh, let's not put it in until we need it, but let's bear in mind what it, what it is for when we do need it. So then we'll put, um, oh, other thing is uh, text align. Yeah, like that. Okay, and so now, Let's put that in there. Because uh, now I want some padding. Um, let's do a third of an M top and right. That's a little, yeah. I'll work with that for now. I'll go with that. That's fine by me for now. And maybe we want to use, would we use a unit that's proportional to the viewport? I don't think so. I think that what that, whether that spacing feels appropriate is going to depend more on the topography and should flow with that. So, 
uh, actually, in fact, let's run this off root m. That's really like when we, that was interesting. Um, yeah, yeah, I want it to go with that. Uh, in case, you know, if I change the size of this text, I don't, that's, I don't want that to change. I want it to go off the root M. So, okay. Now, um, the audio section is going to go in the lower left. So let's do something similar. So that's, um, top right, bottom. Maybe I'm just weird, but I like to put the position attributes in the same order that they go like in a um, shorthand prop property attribute. You know what I'm talking about. Width 50%. Order box, text align left is fine. Um, cool. That got us where we want to be. Um, I guess it's sitting up from there. Because our line, mm, we have an empty line, right? With the, which I think I'm fine with. I guess we'll see how it looks later, whether, because there's a downside to having that content shift up and down, and there's a downside to having an empty line. And so let's, and maybe, maybe the label should be there just, and then have the field empty. And so those are kind of three different options. And, um, I'm happy to explore them more after more of the, um, more of the visual stuff's done. And so we can see it in context of what those options look like. So we'll just put a pin in that for now, but, um, I think that's why it's sitting up from the, from the bottom there. So that's, that's probably fine. Um, and then, um, we'll put the background information in the bottom, right? Is it better it's, if it's left? What do you think? Ooh, that might be the way to go. Play around with that a little more later. Um, leave it like this for now. Um, and we may even condense and put like artist and title on one line, get rid of the labels, things like that. Like as we get this built out more, we'll revisit those options and see what looks good, you know, cause I'm not like, I'm not a pro at this stuff. I can get by and, um, but a lot of how I get by is to look at it and say yes or no, and then work on it until I say yes a lot, you know? 
I mean, that's how everybody does it. I don't know, but that's how I do it. And it, it takes a little experimentation to come to a good solution. So, uh, okay. Well, I like that. And, uh, I think what I would say we could do next is let's actually load the background in. Um, and then we'll style that up some, and then we'll flip back and style these things to look better on top of it. So yeah, we got plenty of time in this video for that. Um, so I'll go ahead and just put the, um, oh, these should be in a paragraph. That was gross. Um, and then So before we dive into that, I'm noticing here, um, audio metadata, bumper, metadata, let's do something like that. And we can get rid of this. but not that. See what I'm up to? Is I'm thinking, oh, the link. Yeah, we do hide the link. Let's do it like this for now, see what we think. See what we think of the link. Um, link field. I don't think we need that. We'll use it though. That's fine. We use that to hide it. And, um, something similar here, won't we? Hmm. So wordy. Okay, so it's bumper metadata now. And uh, audio metadata. Hidden. Hmm. Um, no, we'll leave something, come back to that thought of like what happens if JavaScript's not loaded, right? Or not enabled. Um, some people do that. Hard to blame them with the way the internet is anymore. Hard, not impossible. Uh, okay, so that shows that, so we can drop all of those. And then here, audio metadata. And that clears all of these. Um, so here, I think it's audio link. Oh, look at that. I had uh, built it wrong anyway. Audio link field. Hidden. And there's that. Yes. And then we kind of did the same thing here. Yep. Okay. So that cut that down a little. I'm still happy with how it looks, how it works, how it feels. Um, okay. Well, now with that set, let's get into the image and um, 
it's going to be background image. And I think that's it for that. Hidden? No, I don't think we need to hide it. Okay, yeah, so it made a new line for it here. Um, so we'll put the background image in the background. Background image. We'll pull that again out of the flow. And um, top zero, right zero, width 100%, height 100%. That didn't do exactly what I thought. Let's what am I missing here? Oh the paragraph has a margin. But of course it does. And um, that was weird. And the image. Okay, so that did work more or less, I think, but it puts in mind, let's also tighten up um, section spacing. Tighten up, yeah. Section, yeah, oh geez, could we piggyback on what we've got here? Can we say, I forget uh, which way these associate. That did not totally work. Well, that does. All right, cool. Um, so that was better. Now we should load an image onto the background if we want to actually see how that works. And my guess is it's not going to look very good. Um, we'll still need to set some more attributes on that. And... Um, Mm, yeah, I'm trying to remember. Anyway, we'll want to make sure it scales to cover, but different. There's um, some newer stuff for that. There's some older stuff for that, I think. I'll probably have to look it up a little and get back to you. But let's at least get the image in there so we can see what it looks like by default. Um, current. Background. Uh, background image. Let's set the source attribute to the file URL. And it loads in. Maybe. Let 
Okay, so that's a little better for now. Um, and you can already see like this text is going to have very poor contrast over that. And uh, don't worry, I got a plan for that. I've got a plan. Um, that didn't sound very much like Dutch, did it? Sorry, I'm awful at voices, but I just can't resist doing them anyway. Okay, so we got to scale that. Uh, it didn't like our width and height, huh? Mm. <laughs> well, what if I... Uh... Mm, can't... I don't know why it was throwing that warning. I wish you could. Will it, is it in the console? No, we just don't get to know. It didn't like it, but we don't get to know why. Unsupported property value. on an image. Okay. Well, I don't mind specifying it like that. Um, but uh, image, is it scaling? Is it uh, image rendering? No. Background size? Is that? Mm, I don't think so. Uh, although, if we have to, we could, and maybe we should, make that a background. How well supported is that? Uh, pretty well. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, background position and Man, size sounds right, but hmm, weren't we just looking at size? Stretch, yeah, scaling, contain and cover, that's what I was thinking about. So we can use background image. How's background size suit us? That does not rule out anything we haven't already ruled out, I don't think. So that's pretty cool. I think... Um, I think we're fine to do it that way instead. So that being the case, let's get rid of this. Oh, hold on though. Yes, that's fine, but um What we need, so we'll dump that for now, yeah. Um, but we're, we, it's not as simple as just making it like the background image on the background because 
remember the text contrast. So we're going to have like the image and then we're going to stack, we're going to Z stack some stuff on top of it to tone it down some, I think. And how Z index goes way back, right? Yeah. Um, what about opacity? That's probably what would get me in the most trouble. Nope, that's pretty well supported. And then CSS filter effects. Blur, yeah, I'll want, but if we don't get it, it's not a big deal. And Um, okay, well, we'll f figure that out. So the net of that is I feel okay to use this approach, but I don't think we can use just our existing semantic elements to stack that up. I think we need some empty divs. Um, to use as kind of like hosts for each layer. Um, yeah, so let's try that. Background image. And... Um, So let's, uh, again, position fixed. And um, I put this at the top because I think the subsequent content will stack on top of it by default. But I don't totally remember how stacking contexts work. Like, we're going to find out together. Unless you already know, in which case you're like, bro, you don't even know about stacking contexts? I know more about MP3 files, sorry. Um, top, right, bottom, left. And let's see, does that load up okay? Well, not really, we got some errors. Background image set attribute, of course. Um, So that's going to be here. Come here, Internet. Help me remember style attribute. It's like on HTML element, right? HTML element. Mm -hmm. uh, read only. Setting styles, that's what I'm thinking about. Uh, oh, well, that's probably not what we want to do. Um, how... How do we set a style on that? I know there's a way. Yeah. Uh, mm. Hmm. Oh, 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 okay. So it is read only, but we're just going to set. So let's try that. Style dot. 
um, background image equals what's it going to be? It's like uh, Earl plus response dot file Earl like that. Hmm, feels a little hanky, but. Oh, what did I just? Oh, wow, man. You didn't stop me from that? Totally putting that in the wrong place. Uh, style dot background image. Earl plus file Earl. Something like that, I think. Undefined is not an object. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yay. Okay, so we got that far. And um, hmm. and scale it. So, what did we find? Is its background size? Um, Hover. Do I remember that right? That looks good. Um, and okay, as long as we're doing this, we should look at is it background? A uh, mm. Is it uh, background attachment? Fixed within the viewport or scrolls. Well, no. That's not what I was thinking of. We don't scroll anyway, so background. Hmm. So I guess here's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, see how that just from the right, I'd prefer it was from the center. You see what I'm saying? Um, it seems like you can set that, right? Uh, cropped vertically or horizontally, so no empty space remains. Hmm. Oh. oh, that's not what we want. Gradients, no. Hmm, I think there's a way to do it. Uh, CSS, background, size, center. Hmm, centering a background image. Background position. Oh, did I just like go right by that? Right there, yeah. Mm hmm. Hmm. Can we use that? Is that, I mean, you know, if, if an older browser didn't get it, it wouldn't be the end of the world. This is uh, definitely in the realm of 
polish. Oh, and it's been around forever. Really? It just shows like, man, some of the stuff I think's been around forever is kind of newer than I thought, and some of the stuff that's kind of newer than I thought's been around forever. I think it's got a lot more to do with like, how excited I was when it came out or something like that than like how old it actually is. So that should have, yeah, look, see, that's way better. So that was worth doing, cool. Now, so this, now we can address the contrast thing because this is bad. Um, so two ways I want to address the contrast thing. One is I want to dim this way down and put light text over it. Uh, three ways. Among the ways, I'll come in again. Uh, one way is I want to dim it way down. Second way is I want to do a vignette effect so that the corners especially are darker, darker, which is where we have our text. So we'll get even better contrast there. And then third way is I want to blur this a little. Um, and that also helps with contrast because then you don't have sharp lines under your text, but also, um, a lot of these backgrounds are scaled up a lot to fit the viewport and a little blur on them will help smooth over the fact they don't really have the resolution they want. Um, and it also makes it feel a little bit lower fidelity, which fits the aesthetic, right? A little older, a little lower fidelity. This is what we're looking for with the look. So mellow, don't want any sharp edges here. You know, this is for chilling out. This is for not to be the focus of your attention. It's why you're doing something else. It shouldn't be too contrasty, too sharp, too in your face, any of that. So let's see how can we do that. So I think I saw, can we, man, blur, not that blur. Um, filter. 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 Hmm. So this isn't super, uh, so we're not going to support Safari 5.1 on Snow Leopard and we're not going to support IE 11 on Windows 7. Um, but Windows 7 has Edge, which folks are probably using instead, or more likely than that, Chrome, um, as does um, Snow Leopard. I don't think you'd go much older than Snow Leopard and still have a reasonable browser. Uh, you could have XP with Chrome. Um, I don't know what version of Chrome is current on XP. Um, you're going to have um, SSL problems on those older operating systems, but Chrome 49 and quit helping me. Oh, this is totally supported by Chrome 49. So you could even have this blur on Windows XP um, if you had loaded a third party browser, it looks like so. Yeah, that's pretty broad support, I'll say, if we can go back to Windows XP and Snow Leopard. Um, filter applies graphical effects like blur or color shift to an element. Blur. Let's start with one pixel. I actually seem to recall that might be too much. We might want to go down a little. Uh, no, actually, that's pretty all right. We could maybe even, what if we go a little higher? That's perhaps a little heavy. We'll leave it at one for now and um, see what we think as we go along. Okay, so then for the vignette, Effect. Can I do that all? Let's 
let's let's have a second div and we're just gonna make it so and my reasoning here oh uh, well um yeah the other thing i want to do is put a pin in that for a second so what if the background didn't get loaded here um this should be uh, we'll put a, put a pin in the pin. We'll come back to that. But I want to consider the case for when a background image didn't get loaded for some reason. The whole thing shouldn't fall apart, right? Okay, so let's... Well, if I can use filter... Filter function blur. Oh, so this has different, it's still broadly supported. Yeah, okay, so filter function blur is important though. So we need to be looking at those. And I guess we could use more filters here. Brightness, filter function, Brightness, is that how I want to search for that? Uh, also very well supported. So let's, so I've done this a different way in the past where I stack things up like I described using the Z index, but uh, maybe we can achieve all of this with filter effects and I would be satisfied to do that as long as we don't give up a ton of browser compatibility to do it. You know, when I did it before, I was doing um, a more sophisticated, almost like CRT effect and um, ended up backing away with that, like with the raster lines and everything. Um, and I, I did back away from that because um, it was just a little much and it was getting to be pretty cumbersome to get it to work well different places or then when you, you start like different browsers or on mobile and stuff it was it was getting real fiddly without taking a deep dive into it and then also I've kind of considered like is that really the right aesthetic so I had started with like a very like retro computer aesthetic um, but in talking to other people and like refining it um, we backed away from that a little so Brightness, and it looked like that was just a float. 0 0.4 sounds like a place to start, sure. That takes it down pretty dim. Oops. Um, yeah, let's try... 65%. Let's try 60% for now. We can revisit it. Um, should I be... I should be putting these all on one. Right. That makes sense. Okay, we got our blur back. And... So I think the way I managed the vignette was with a box shadow. See if somebody else has done that. And yeah, that's especially what I want. Yeah, and like that, but way more. Box shadow. Uh, what's that little oh supported with prefix webkit okay so um, we'll make a point to put both Um, and then, uh, let's see, what were we doing? The box shadow. How's that 
for compatibility. Pretty broad. Um, and again, we need to put dash webkit to get back to, oh, Safari 5.1. Uh, I'm pretty fine with not prefixing that. I don't think that gets us anything we don't already have excluded somehow. So, box shadow. Um, let's, let's see the MDN for that. So we're going to do an inset shadow. Yeah, I think I get the gist of it in the inbox shadow, but I'd like to see the syntax for this. Mm -hmm. Inset. We don't want M's, we want Viewport relative, can we use that? Mm, doesn't go back that far. Um, I wonder if I can use percentages. That didn't work at all. Unsupported property value. Well, I gotta tell you, I wouldn't mind if it said a little more than that, but all right, well, we'll go off root M's then since the next best thing is probably to go off the typography of the text that will be in those corners because that's one of the principal reasons we're doing this is to provide them with good contrast. So, um, let's see if that works. Um, well, I mean, it sure did something. Um, hmm, okay. Maybe mm, I see, right? They used zero, zero, and then they gave a third value, which is probably the blur radius. So let's try that. Yeah, that makes more sense. Oh yeah, look, it kind of... So let's um, temporarily cut this out. Hmm. You know, you misunderstood me. Okay, yeah, we need a lot more than that. Yeah, like a really heavy vignette like that. And we can lighten up the brightness a little if we need to, but this puts a pretty good darkening behind all of our text. In fact, we may go even further. Yeah. Yeah, so all of our text has a good dark background behind it now. Um, which reminds me, background color, dark gray. Let's, let's try do dark. Um,
about like that, yeah. And so that means um, we'll also want, we'll get into the text uh, probably next video, but we're gonna wanna turn that text brighter colors to sit on the dark background. Um, that looks about right with that background, just color, but let's see it with a background image again. That's a little dark. Um, so let's bring up the bright, the base brightness. Seven. Oh, <laughs> seven. Let's go to eight. Pretty good with that. Let's pull this back a little. Yeah, I'm really liking the look of that. Awesome, so let's set this the same. And how about that blur? Can we go up to two pixels? It's a little heavy. I'm rolling with one and a half for now. And um, may even, what's it like if we knock the contrast down a little? I saw that was an option. Oh, no, no, we need way more than that. Mm. No, we could pull the saturation down. Oh, is this supposed to be uh, like this? Is it not even a thing? Did I just make it up? Saturate, and it is a percentage. Okay. Yeah, we might play with that some more later. I'll leave it off for now. All right, yeah, so that'll make this video. For the next one, I think we'll get the text looking better, and then we'll probably dive into um, the audio, get the audio playing, and then, shoot, man, we've pretty well got a thing, haven't we? That'll be exciting. Kind of a... Uh, prototype at least, or uh, it won't be ready to push live. We'll have to do some things and stuff to make it um, production ready. Um, may even choose to write some tests before we shove it out the door. Um, but it'll at least be a streaming music thing and yeah, we're getting close, aren't we? Kind of exciting, kind of crazy how it only takes such a short time. Although, you know, there's the time for the coding, but there's a lot of time I've got into earlier prototypes and like refining the ideas and researching stuff and the business to know like, what should we be trying to do here? Um, and there's more of that to do too. Um, a lot more of that to do, but um, it was time to get a a fresh prototype out and um, had come up with enough changes to like how the service works. Um, really took took the idea and turned it like at least 90 degrees. I don't know how to how to metaphor that, but um, that's why I thought to do these videos is I thought like, well, 
you know, I could rework what I have or I could start from scratch and it'd probably be close to the same work. Um, but it'd probably be a lot more interesting video to see it come up from scratch. And so this was, this was really for you um, to do the little bit of extra effort to do it from scratch to really redo it. So, um, that said, I've gotten a lot of side benefits out of it too. It's, it's helped me to um, have you to talk to and to think about um, doing things in a logical order to, to where somebody else would think it made sense. Um, has been a good discipline, and then also um, just to start from a clean slate and put in only what really still needs to be here rather than try to remove things that I no longer need. Like that, I think, has really cut down the amount of cruft that's, that's built up from the different prototypes and different... Um, like everything we tried <laughs> left something behind that didn't need to be there, you know? Um, and this has helped clear some of that out. So that's another benefit. Um, and hopefully I'm making some friends along the way, so that's cool. Um, so all that said, we've still got, still got a ways to go before we can shove this out the door and see what people think of it, but um, we'll do that starting in the next video, and the next video will not be the last video, I'm sure of that. Um, we got more to go than that still. Um, but this is, this is huge. We've got uh, a thing, we've got our background, we've got the metadata flowing in, um, and, uh, yeah, so next video we'll work on the typography, we'll work on getting the audio in, and then once we have, we're getting like one audio and one background in, then we got to work on that, um, getting it to actually stream and like continue to get the next one as it needs it. Um, so yeah, that's what we'll be looking at in future episodes. And until then, um, if you have thoughts on the programming I did, some notes you could give me, or if you'd like me to answer questions or perhaps even give advice, um, please let me know down in the comments. And um, as always, please let me know what you think of the videos and what I could do to make them better. And until then, take care.